up you guys, Marty Schwartz here with Marty Music. So I've been scrolling through the guitar subreddit and I found some of the best questions that I would like to give my hot take on. So let's check these out. Question, how to improve upon pentatonic? Hey, that sounds like something I can answer. One, practice the scale for your muscle memory and just efficiency with your technique. Two, you really want to know the extended scale. I teach it for free all over YouTube, Marty Music. <laughs> If you use that as your roadmap, you're already adding slides into your technique. Little sequences, groups of three. Groups of four. Groups of two notes per descending and ascending. You know, all these things, these are all to build technique. Then, learn some famous solos and just take one lick from a famous solo and use a jam track or a looper pedal. Do your normal improvising, but then add that one lick. Like, I think of something like, uh Use your regular improvising and then take that one piece. Instead of learning, you know, the entire solo, take the one, one little nugget from that famous solo and see if you can incorporate that in while you're playing. And you use that extended scale. And eventually, it'll adapt into your own language, right? Right now, you're kind of quoting a famous solo, but eventually, the more you do that stuff, the more it starts to become your own vocabulary as opposed to quoting somebody. It's just how people learn to speak another language. You know, you hear someone say it, you repeat it, until eventually you have your own little vocabulary going. Uh, so those are just some, some tips that I think will really help. Practice the stuff super slow, and you'll keep getting better. Posted by Ruina, question. Cat puked on my humbugger, how do I clean it? Cat puked all over my electric, sitting in a case on the floor. Case was open. Literally cat puke all in the humbucker of my Ibanez. It's only slightly on the middle pickup, but the bridge humbucker looks bad. How the heck do I clean this, or am I looking at getting a new pickup? Can I remove it and soak it in something like alcohol or vinegar? looking for some help. All right, well, that's something that doesn't happen every day. Usually it's your bass player puking in your humbucker and not your cat. So I apologize for that. I don't know how bad it smells, but if you have uh, the cap on top of the humbucker, you're really gonna wanna remove that and then just use like a bait, like a light guitar cleaner and just try that first. Don't get it too wet, but get it just enough to where you're getting that puke out. And I wish you the best of luck on that. I'm sorry that happened. I guess a lesson for keeping your uh, case closed. Question, what advice would you have given to your novice self? What advice would you have given to your novice or intermediate self? What would have expedited your learning curve? Would you do anything differently? I like that question, and yes, we all think about things we could have done better. One of the main things I would have told myself is to practice your singing early on, every day, force yourself to do it. You know, I wasn't born with like a natural gift of singing, but if I would have worked on it even half as hard as I worked on guitar, it would be a great skill to have. And typically when you're trying to join a band or you're looking for a professional gig, being able to sing well is gonna definitely be more important than like shredding at a lead guitar solo. So that's one of the things I would have told myself. Question, what is your favorite guitar and why? So out of all my electric guitars, this would have to be my favorite. It's definitely the most sentimental. So I do have an old Martin acoustic that my dad gave me uh, that I keep at home and it's very valuable to me. But the guitar I've played probably the most in my life is this Heritage 535. I had it when I was a full-time uh, working musician and guitar teacher. I had it when I taught uh, elementary school music. And then I also had it for the very first YouTube video I ever made, uh, the biggest show I've ever played. Pretty much it's been with me through all uh, these amazing milestones in my life as a musician. So it's the H535 from Heritage Guitars. It's the original 
Gibson factory. It also plays great and looks great, but it's also just been that one with me all the way. Question, flat wound versus round wound. I've always used round wound just because they seem to be the most common for electric. But I'm curious of the differences in using a flat wound. I've been reading that there will be less fret wear with a flat, but what are the cons? If I went from GHS Boomer 10s to flat wound, what would I notice? Well, that's an interesting question. I, uh, flat wound I think of as very much for jazz. A flat wound string is like what you would find on a stand-up bass. You know, no ridges on it, it's just a smooth string. Very warm, way less bright. You're not gonna get the kind of sounds that you want for rock from a flat wound. But if you wanna do something more like uh, Wes Montgomery or George Benson, that smooth, uh, super warm, just way less presence, but, but like a softer, warmer jazz sound. I would never, if I only had like one guitar, or even two guitars, I wouldn't have flat wounds on them, unless there's a specific thing I was going for in a recording or something. In fact, I have dozens of guitars here and none of them have flat wounds on it. It's just not uh, gonna give you that, uh, that classic electric guitar sound, but they are really cool. Question, guitars that function like a Fender Strat but aren't Fenders. Hey, that's a good question. The first two guitars come to mind are, are not in your price range, but two guitars that I really like a lot that can get closer to a Fender sound than uh, you know, a humbucker guitar, especially a Les Paul, would be a G&L, although I don't know if that's cheating because Leo Fender started G&L after Fender. They don't sound exactly like a Fender Strat, but they give you that spanky, bell-like tone that you cannot get from humbucker guitars. You just can't do it. The other guitar that I like a lot are the Music Man guitars. I don't personally own one, but they make some great guitars. Like when I did my guitar tours with Hunter Hayes and he was showing his signature model, you know, he's mostly a country player, and but he likes to rock too. And that guitar gave him a lot of versatility. And they're cool and they're little, you know, G&L and Music Man guitars, you know, they're a little left of the mainstream. So maybe check those out. Question, good reasonably priced amps, pedals for an electric newbie? That's a great question. I've actually been using a little Black Star practice amp for learning tunes and putting headphones on. Very affordable. I mean, we're talking that little, that little guy and you can get a nice distorted sound out of it, a nice clean sound out of it. It's got a little delay uh, effect that can just add a little, um, a little roundness to it and super affordable. Now the Fender Mustang is a great, what probably next step up from that. It's got lots of effects, it's louder, until eventually you would wanna get maybe some kind of tube amp. Blackstar makes an affordable tube amp that's super loud. I personally love Fender amps and Fender style amps. Now a pedal I've been digging the crap out of, I've only had it for a little while, is the Rat. Proco Rat 2 distortion pedal. It sounds awesome. <laughs> Question, small tube amp versus modeling amp. I'm not super positive on the Vox AC4 4 watt, but it sounds to me like it's still pretty similar to that micro cube that, that you have. If you wanna upgrade, maybe save more money and move your way up into like, like a Hot Rod DeVille. That would be my recommendation. The Hot Rod DeVille is one of the most epic amps for the price you can get out there. So that's what I would do. And I do love tube amps more than any kind of modeling amp, but it sounds to me like this particular deal, you know, why does your friend want to sell to you so bad? Maybe think about that. Question, Les Paul or SG? Oh boy, you open a can of worms with this one. Les Paul or SG? Man, if a gun was pointed at me, I would say Les Paul. Uh, they feel a little more comfortable. I'm, since I'm doing YouTube and videos and teaching, I'm not standing up with a Les Paul very often. So the downside is Les Pauls tend to be very heavy and you will get neck pain from the weight pulling down, compressing the top of your neck right there. It's not a joke, it's real. And SG is super light and super fun to play. I mean, you, all you have to do is think of Angus, you know, two of the greatest guitar players ever, Derek Trucks and Angus, play them and they're epic guitars. And they're also more affordable. SGs are cheaper than Les Pauls. But if I could only have one, I would have a Les Paul. Fortunately, I have a Les Paul and an SG. Posted by you, Brady, and the Jets. 
Rivers Cuomo is an underrated guitar player. Well, underrated guitar player to me means someone who's not getting their full appreciation, you know? Rivers Cuomo is mostly thought of as a frontman lead singer, but yet he's writing all those songs. So I would have to say, yes, he is underrated because he writes really catchy melodies and really cool chord progressions. And also he's not super flashy, which tends to get overlooked. (laughs) 